Probably the most common cause of infrequent periods, in other words, someone that's not having regular periods because they're not coming frequently enough, is something called polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is also called PCOS. Some people also call this anovulatory bleeding because it basically the polycystic ovarian syndrome leads to a situation in which you're not ovulating or making eggs, and that's why you don't have periods frequently. So let's talk about uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome and what that means and how do you evaluate for that. Um, first of all, it's almost a misnomer. The polycystic ovarian syndrome may have ovaries with lots of little cysts, hence polycystic ovar ovarian syndrome, but that's not really what's causing the problem or it doesn't even necessarily have to be present to have PCOS. And a little word to the wise, anytime you hear uh, something that ends in syndrome rather than something that ends in, say, disease, a syndrome is a cluster of uh, symptoms, but it doesn't mean that there's one specific disease that's causing that cluster of, syndrome, uh, of uh, symptoms. And so polycystic ovarian syndrome is a cluster of symptoms uh, that sort of act the same way, but it may be actually caused by different things. And so that's why it has the syndrome attached to it. So anyway, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome is a very common thing to be diagnosed with. And the general person with PCOS has uh, certain characteristics. They tend to be overweight. Uh, they tend to have uh, irregular periods. Usually they'll skip periods or maybe go a very long time without having a period. Uh, and finally, they tend to have um, male pattern hair growth. So they'll have um, hair growing on their face or sometimes on their chest or their abdomen, um, like a man would rather than like a woman. Uh, so they tend to have problems with hair growth. And those are really the three main features uh, of polycystic ovarian syndrome as far as uh, how we diagnose it. And so generally what will happen is someone will come in complaining of missing periods or going a long time without a period. Um, and then we'll ask the questions, you know, do you have a hard time losing weight? Uh, do you have uh, abnormal hair growth? Those three things pretty much define PCOS. So if you have those three things, you pretty much have PCOS. Now there are other things that can be done uh, as far as laboratory studies, uh, just to make sure that's really what's going on. And there's a lot of labs that can be ordered. Um, one lab is, is called an LH and an FSH, and these are hormones that are made by the brain that stimulate the ovaries. And we can look at the ratios of that, and that can help us diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome. But the truth is, the LH-FSH ratio really isn't necessary to make the diagnosis. What we're really doing when we're ordering labs for polycystic ovarian syndrome is ruling out other things. So we'll check your thyroid hormone, for example, because if your thyroid is off, that can make it so that your periods um, are irregular, you could have a hard time losing weight, and you can look very much like a PCOS patient. But the treatment's very different because we'd want to check, fix your thyroid, uh, not fix uh, your female hormones. Um, we can also sometimes look for uh, androgen-secreting tumors. These are certain kinds of tumors that people have that can put out male-type hormones and can give somebody a PCOS-like picture. Another thing is something called um, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is another um, uh, problem that can be different from sort of classic PCOS, but can give a picture that looks like PCOS. So generally, if someone comes in and we think they have PCOS, we'll do some lab work basically to make sure that they don't have one of these other things and then um, diagnose them with PCOS. Um, women with PCOS tend to have in irregular and infrequent periods, but what will often happen is they won't have a period for a very long time, and then all of a sudden they'll have the mother of all periods, and they'll bleed tremendous amounts, uh, become anemic, uh, and have blood clots and other problems. And that's because it sort of builds up and builds up, and then it all comes out at once. So if you think about it, if you have a period every month, you bleed a small amount every month, then you have the rest of the month to sort of catch up from that blood loss. If you go six months without a period, and then all of a sudden you lose six months worth of period, period blood, your body may not be able to handle that as well. And so we sometimes see that in women that have PCOS. On the other hand, someone with PCOS will hardly bleed at all, and they'll go six months a year and then just have a little bit of spotting for a few days. So you can see different pictures. One of the problems with anovulatory bleeding, such as what you have in PCOS, is that the uterus itself is seeing a predominantly estrogen environment. Um, and so it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker, but it doesn't get that progesterone surge to help organize those tissues. And that actually is a risk factor for uterine cancer. And so women that have anovulatory bleeding, such as women with PCOS, it's very important that they have a period at least every three months just to keep them safe 
and to avoid um, a problem with a precancer or eventually even a uterine cancer. So that's something um, that's going to be important in the treatment. Uh, so PCOS brings a lot of problems because uh, it can bring the irregular bleeding. The problems with facial hair growth um, can be very disturbing for people, um, as well as the difficulty in losing weight. So these cluster of symptoms aren't symptoms that people typically want, and therefore PCOS can become quite a problem. It can also become a problem when a woman wants to become pregnant because they're not ovulating, they're not making eggs, and so it can become difficult to get pregnant without help. So that's PCOS in a nutshell. That's sort of how we define it and how we evaluate for it. Um, and we'll talk in another video on how it's treated. MedTwice.com